Hey everyone, welcome back to the cabin. The first thing I'm going to have to do is get rid of four eyes. I forgot that I had this set on when I walked out of the cabin. I actually grabbed these. Um, but what I'd like to talk to you today about is the new TYM 574. The first time that I seen this was on a video uh, from Out of the Woods, my good friend Nathan. And uh, when I went up to visit him, he actually let me get inside of his. And I tell you what, I just fell in love with it. I had been thinking about getting a new tractor for some time because the other one that I had was just a little bit too lightweight for the things that I was trying to do around here and it became more and more apparent as I started getting deliveries of uh, logs that a good friend of mine that I used to work with in EMS um, has access to and he's been bringing them over and some of them I just couldn't get them off the trailer. I basically had to drag them off and then roll them around. Uh, the Kubota was a really, really good tractor. I'd had it for four years, and I had built everything up here at the outpost with it. Um, but, like I said, as time went on, I realized that it was just a little bit too small. If I wasn't trying to do logging, um, and just basically, you know, homesteading where maybe I had a small garden, I could use a plow and a disc and some things like that, I probably wouldn't need anything this big. But a lot of those logs, you know, can get to weighing between uh, 1,000, 1,500 pounds, and uh, like I said, the Kubota that I had, just that was really pushing it. Um, so I decided that it was time to go ahead and get another tractor. And when I seen that one at Nathan's, and he told me what the front end could lift and the rear end could lift, I thought, you know, that's the machine that I need. So I went over to Oneida, Tennessee, to TYM, talked with them, was able to trade the Kubota with the equity that I had built up in it for just a little bit more per month and ended up with uh, this new TYM 574. One of the things that I really like about my new 574 is the ability for it to lift a lot more than the Kubota on the rear end. I think that this will lift about 3,300 pounds. I think the max on the Kubota was 1,100. So this is about three times as strong. So when I'm using my subsoiler, I should be able to plow through roots and being able to pull up small trees actually that have been cut off with it. The front end capacity of this is 2,700 pounds uh, being able to lift at full height which has made all the difference in logging because the Kubota like I said have trouble uh, pulling a lot of the logs that I had delivered down there but in the last video you seen me go down and snatch up a log that the Kubota was just having just struggling to be able to drag over uh, but this you know picked it up with no problem. Now this new grapple that I purchased is actually made by Titan and it was around $2,200 if I remember correctly uh, but the ability to be able to go and grab a log, transport it, bring it and set it down on the sawmill is going to be a whole lot better than using the forks that I had purchased because as you bring a log and you set it down on the sawmill as it rolls out and the weight is distributed towards the end of the forks it wants to lower those because it's lifting up the rear end and that's one thing you don't want to do is mess up your sawmill by a log rolling either off or slamming down on top of the bunks, which a lot of times when I turn the logs that happens, but there's nothing I can really do about that. But this is going to make a whole lot of difference in being able to set those logs down there. Um, the forks, if I was just going to be transporting uh, logs from one area to another, I would probably use those because I can go in there and scoop and sometimes get a couple of them depending on the weight and transport those. But um, you know, the grapple is going to come in quite handy. 
They also had to add this third function right here, um, which was the ability to hook up your grapple to that, the hydraulics. So they put this on here for me, which will also uh, allow me to be able to purchase other Quick Connect implements actually having this third function here and being able to plug into it and have hydraulics on the front end. That shot that I just gave you was the full lift capacity of the tractor. Now this is a brush guard that uh, you need to let it down in order to raise the front end. And these little knobs right here, you basically just turn those. It's got one on each side. We will loosen it. And then this will go forward. Now the way you raise this front end, there's a small pin right here that you can pull, which actually unlatches it. And then it will lift up like this. And underneath the hood, you have got a storage area for the battery, which is really nice and handy to have, as well as your air breather, which has some little clips right here. I went ahead and loosened them, where you've got your air filter right here that you can change. So that's really nice to be able to have this right there at the front, underneath the hood, to be able to change your air filter if needed. Everything seems to be really well placed. Um, you can fill up with fluid right here on the front, as well as down here if you need to fill up um, the front axle. Right here is the cap where you do that. Then on the right side of the engine, depending on which way you're looking at it, you've got your fuel filter right here, you've got your oil filter, and you've got a really easy access to add your oil. Now all of the hydraulic lines come to this area right here which I don't really care for that much because on my Kubota they were all hidden between the hood and the arm which they didn't stick out right here that a limb could catch. I'm just going to have to be a little bit more careful. This part right down here is the third function that they added for that front end to be able to use the grapple or any other type of equipment that I put on the front. But this is where they all hook up right here. Now the 574 and I'm not sure if it goes with all of the other models but they have uh, nice doors actually on both sides of them with this handle system right here as well as on the inside very sturdy and they have this little rod right here that actually works it when you close it and that makes it stay open so that the winds just not blowing it back and forth unless it's really really high winds but they close really nice and they open really nice and they also you have the ability to lock them from the outside. I have headlights on the front, work lights on the top. The other thing that I have are turn signals here on both sides on the front, both sides on the rear, as well as brake lights. And I'm fixing to show you this is probably the coolest feature that this tractor has. Now if you've ever hooked up any equipment before on a tractor to the three-point hitch on the back, you'll know that sometimes it can be a problem. And I will tell you this, that this box blade the way that it's built is a little bit of a problem because these arms actually have to go into a channel right here which makes it a little bit more difficult to get these arms in and get the pins in as opposed to this top link right here. But let me crank this thing up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. tell you what just being able to do that from back here is going to make all the difference in being able to adjust everything where I can actually hook up my stuff to the three-point hitch before I would have to go up front I would have to try to lift come back here adjust maybe go up here lift a little bit more but now I'm back here where my eyes are right on it so this is gonna like I said make a whole lot of difference and um, this is a great addition actually to any tractor that you could have so I'm really happy that they added this accessory back here. Now these are some pretty massive tires on a small tractor like this as well as the ones on the front and honestly every tractor that they had over there had the industrial tires. I would have much preferred to have the ag tires but then like I said that's all they had and to be able to uh, purchase these I don't know how much they are but I'm thinking that they're probably right around fifteen hundred dollars a piece. Um, I did have them put fluid in, which added an extra 1,100 pounds to the tractor um, at an additional cost because they don't come with fluid in them. 
but I don't know anybody that does any farming that doesn't add fluid to their tires because not only does it give you more weight, but it also gives you a lot smoother ride. Now I also know that a lot of people will deflate their tires a little bit so that they have more traction on the ground, kind of like a skid steer as opposed to a, uh, say a um, forklift that actually had uh, tires on it uh, because you do get more traction. Um, but, you know, they've got these pumped up. I'm not actually going to change them because it does have four-wheel drive. But these should probably wear uh, better than my ag tires uh, because, you know, there's some uh, areas where I have to get on the pavement and go over to my sister's house back and forth. So um, I think that these are going to be sufficient because, you know, when it's out, when it's raining and stuff like that, I'm not going to be doing a lot of work anyway. The other thing that's nice is I've got couplers back here for my hydraulics that I didn't have on the Kubota. It only had the front end loader. So now I've got um, hydraulics not only on the back, but I've got them on the front as well. And everything is basically set up for anything that I want to do. Now another cool feature that I've got is heat and air. On the rear side, I've got intakes right here. And on the front side, I have got the output. Now I'm not doing a lot of farming, but if I was, that would really come in handy. But if I'm doing some log transports or something like that, where I'm kind of inside the cab with the door shut for, I don't know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that, to be able to have heat and air is going to make a world of difference, especially as hot as, have I mentioned how hot it is, as hot as it has been this year during the summertime. I almost forgot to mention, another addition that I've got right up here are two nice Kenwood stereo speakers that go with my new Kenwood stereo. Now that was a small clip from where we get our music that we actually pay for on a monthly basis because any music other than that would be copyrighted that I can't use. But you can imagine being inside the cab and having the ability to listen to some music while you're out there working which just helps to set your mood and you can really jam to whatever you're doing. Along with that I've also got this little Bluetooth right here that I can actually answer the telephone if it rings from inside the cab. Another cool feature that I've got is I've got a 12 volt access port right here as well as the ability to charge my cell phone. Alright, now on the inside of the cab, you've got this little hook right here, which actually hooks down the clutch. So if you're wanting to do some things that uh, you don't want the tractor to move, this is a way to engage the clutch right here and not have to worry about it coming undone. This mechanism right here is actually the lock for the brake. When you push the brake down, you want to pull up on it and it will lock the brake in that position. If you want to let the brake loose, you just basically depress on the brakes and they will unlock. On this side you've got all of your light instruments which is your turn signals, your uh, running lights and you've even got a horn right there as well as your hazard uh, button right there. You've got two green indicators, one for more information uh, what's going on with the tractor that's displayed up top and the other one is for the emissions control. Over here on this side, you've got your RPM handle right here where you can increase or decrease that. Right here you've got your on and off switch as well as your PTO. You can set it to auto or you can set it to manual. Down here on the floor you've also got a throttle as well as the one up top here that you can use with your hand. On the right side you have got your front end lift right here. This gear right here is one through four. On this side you've got low and high. On this side right here you have got your four-wheel drive which is engaged. You push it down and it disengages. And right here you've got the differential that will actually lock both wheels to where they actually pull at the same time by just depressing that. You've got a nice set of armrests right side and left side. Right here you've got all the controls for the nice cushy seat. I've got three mirrors. I got two on the side. I got a driver's rear view mirror right here. I got wipers front and rear. I'll tell you what folks, this thing is absolutely loaded with really cool stuff. Another really great, great feature that this tractor has is the ability to be able to fuel up right here 
and not have to climb up on top of the tractor like my Kubota had it up on top there to be able to uh, put diesel in your tractor. And I think that this is a 17 gallon um, tank where my Kubota was, I believe it was a 10. But um, yeah, this is really nice to be, be able to walk up and pour the fuel in right here at waist level and not have to climb around with a five gallon jug. The other thing that I really like about my 574 is it is powered by a 55 horse diesel engine, which according to some of the research that I've been reading is a Kuk G, K U K J E engine, which is actually a Korean made engine. Now, you know, there's parts on this from the U.S., there's parts on it from Korea, there's parts on it from around the world because, let's face it, we live in a worldwide economy now. But um, it's 55 horses where the uh, Kubota, I think it was a 39 horse, so I've got a lot more power to be able to operate with up here on the homestead. And like I said, according to some of the research that I've done, this engine right here is in a class all by itself because of the main reason that there is not a lot of electronics on it it's basically mechanical which would make it a whole lot easier to work on unless you had a computer to be able to plug into like they do my Silverado when I take it in to be able to work on it they have to have a computer so there's a lot of rave about this Coop G engine being like I said in a class all of its own and the good uh, reviews that it has had I just standing here looking at this tire. This is almost as big as one of the rear tires that I had on the Kubota. And of course the muffler comes out and is pointed forward right here. Uh, but you know, folks, there's probably a whole lot of stuff that I have left off that maybe I forgot about or didn't cover on this tractor. But I'll tell you what, I am really pleased uh, with the purchase as well as the price too. Because if I would looked at a new Kubota, um, and th this is really priced competitively, if I'd have looked at a new Kubota, uh, Kubota this size, I would probably have been looking at at least $50,000 or more. Uh, the base price for this tractor right here, without the grapple, was $33,000, um, which I think I paid, uh, it was $23,000, I think, for the Kubota, plus I got some other attachments like the bush hog that I've got, which will work on this, uh, that I actually kept, um, as well as the forks, you know, they. Quick Connect is the same on all tractors, they're universal. Um, and the subsoiler that I had, and there may be another piece of equipment or two that I've got that I can't think of now. But yeah, I'm really pleased with this TYM 574. I'll tell you what, just with a little bit of use that I have used it here, lifting the log, uh, running around, doing some different things, grading the driveway, um, it is really um, pleasant to be able to ride in the cab with the air conditioning, with the stereo going, having the horsepower to do what I need, having the lift power to do what I need here on the homestead. You know, they do make a, a larger one of the TYMs, uh, and I think Nathan's also got it, the 754, if I'm correct. Um, but this right here is about as big as I want to go on the homestead here because I just don't have a lot of room. Um, it's really tight here, and this wasn't that much bigger. You know, it is taller, but it wasn't that much wider than the Kubota that I had. Uh, so when I get off into the woods with having this cab, I'm going to have to make sure and clear a little bit larger path. But the ability to have that cab, it's really, really nice. The Kubota was a really, really good tractor. I know that Nathan has got three of these, and he has no complaints out of any of the three of them. I'll tell you what, folks, I am really happy with this machine. Ever since I climbed in that one up there from uh, my good friend Nathan at Out of the Woods, um, I went down and I looked at this and I fell in love with it and I said, you know, and I told my son because he actually went with me, I said, if there's any way possible, I want to get that tractor. So we sat down and talked with him and like I said, for just a few more dollars per month, I was able to be able to trade the equity that I had in on the Kubota, come out with this and everything is a, a whole lot better up here at the homestead because of that. Now you'll be able to find other YouTube videos that goes into a lot of technical stuff that I'm not really good at. I'm just giving you my two cents, um, basically coming from the heart in comparison to the other tractor that I had and this tractor right here, just plain old everyday English. I am really happy with this machine. And if you want to know any more of the specs, like I said, you can probably go find other YouTube videos. Anyway, guys, appreciate you stopping by. Hope that each and every one of you have a fantastic day. Y'all take care. We look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.